Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So, uh, we've got information regarding that Microsoft or Xbox have made an acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Okay, so they have made a purchase of $70 billion, absolutely insane amount. Perhaps, if, well, I shouldn't say perhaps, it is the biggest acquisition uh, in terms of the price that has been made in gaming history. Uh, you know, just about a week ago, it was actually surpassed with the, you know, Take Two Interactive <laughs> making the acquisition of about, what was it, about 12 billion. Now making a step up from that to six to seven times bigger, being a 70 billion dollars, absolutely insane. Well, we are talking about Microsoft. They are like a trillion dollar company, so they can definitely uh, afford it. They got very, very deep pockets. Comparing this to Sony, of course, they're not into that substantial of a price of difference and stuff. Of course, they cannot make that kind of acquisition. Now, they obviously they can have to be a little bit more selective. So, okay, backtrack regarding Call of Duty, especially, and perhaps even unnecessary to say a lot of other uh, Activision Blizzard games, right? I'm talking about like Overwatch, I'm talking about Warcraft, Diablo, and so, so on and so on. So, we actually got a little bit of a confirmation that indeed Call of Duty it is not going to be exclusive to Xbox or just Xbox platform. Uh, yes, indeed, it will be coming to PlayStation as well, and indeed, I'm talking about from 2023 and onwards from those uh, you know that on release if you guys do not know and if you have been following the news and you know read up about this articles and stuff with the acquisition uh, Activision is still gonna be independent basically away from Xbox until June of 2023 now this kind of raises the question so what does that mean for a Call of Duty game and by the way I'm gonna be mentioning a lot of Call of Duty in this case since Call of Duty getting its yearly releases. What are there gonna be differences? So first things first, in 2022, it's already been, it's, it's a given, right? We're gonna get a Call of Duty, presumably it's been rumored like a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 reboot, uh, whatever it's gonna be continuation from 2019's Modern Warfare, and uh, it will be coming out in October, November of 2022. That's not gonna change. And it's assuming as well, it is gonna have content exclusive for PlayStation first. Uh, but then after, what is it, weeks, months, then it's going to gradually come to, you know, Xbox, perhaps even a year, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what to expect out of that. Now, the thing that works, makes it kind of interesting is going afterwards, right? 2023, uh, we're obviously, may, may, shouldn't say obviously in this case, get another Call of Duty. Now, because Xbox is going to finally have the reins over the Activision Blizzard, and from them on, in June of 2023, a lot of things may change. But it's been already confirmed that, like I said already at the beginning of the commentary, that Call of Duty, at, at least Call of Duty and a lot of other games that Activision Blizzard has, are not going to be exclusive just only for Xbox platform. This is coming from Phil Spencer and that he has told Bloomberg. This is exact quotes as he mentions. I'll just say to the players out there who are playing Activision Blizzard games on Sony's platform, it is not our intent to pull communities away from that platform and we will remain committed to that. So this basically confirms that he's not going to take away a lot of those games uh, you know, uh, from PlayStation and just to make it sure that all those PlayStation community will you know, transition, perhaps some even completely give up on those games and go over to the Game Pass and go over to Xbox exclusive. So it is good news for a lot of you, a lot of people, but also not very good news considering what could this in, entail, right? Because like it's already given that uh, Xbox from now on will be actually receiving exclusive content and perhaps exclusive in terms of being forever exclusive. But again, you know, with the past releases of Call of Duty, you shouldn't expect too much because like PlayStation, hell, even Xbox back in the day when they had exclusive rights uh, for Call of Duty games, like about a decade ago or so, they actually had, you know, quite a subpar, ex like DLCs, little DLCs, extra things and tidbits, it was not even worth it. PlayStation after that, you know, they just kept on getting really shitty uh, content exclusives and nobody really cares about that, at least uh, to my knowledge and to my uh, knowledge of Call of Duty and the exclusives, that's what I think. Now. But 2023, it's going to be an interesting road to see how afterwards it will entail when Microsoft has full reins of Activision Blizzard. So we know that it is not going to have exclusive towards Xbox, uh, you know, with their games. But, you know, they can call off the shots such as like 
make Call of Duty yearly. They can say, no, no more. Have all these three studios, such as the Infinity Ward, uh, Treyarch, and also Sledgehammer games, right? Have them having a break, a year of break from Call of Duty releases, like annually. So let's say like Call of Duty make and not even come out in 2023, and skip they instead they will skip a year and they will release a next Call of Duty in 2024. They skip 2025, they release not a Call of Duty in 2026 because, like I said, there are three studios though, so perhaps it will be quite necessary. And since Call of Duty players, and there's a very big fan base for it, because like if you guys have been paying attention to the chart part, um, to the chart, right, like in terms of the sales of Call of Duty, how to perform, it is always does a phenomenal job in terms of like, like a lot of people, even though they're arguing saying Call of Duty shit every year, well, you're gonna have to look at the, you know, the amount of you know, how much they make. So it's like there are still a lot of community and dedicated fans that are just still gonna be buying the Call of Duty no matter what, because just because of the IP. They may lose on that though. They stop being an annual releases, having annual releases for Call of Duty from 2023 and onwards, Xbox might lose on that. Now, I wanna clarify one thing that a lot of people are saying in terms of exclusives, okay? It's that this is quite famous, right? When they made a purchase last year of Bethesda, you know, basically in the ZeniMax and stuff like that, right? It was a ginormous purpose. and Everyone was saying like, Xbox would not uh, make an acquirement or or they would not purchase this if t having an intent of not making uh, those games exclusive, right? Why would they spend, uh, what was it, like $12 billion just so they could release uh, Bethesda games also on Sony, on Sony's platform? Why would they do that? But we have to understand that that's what they chose to do with Bethesda. That's fine. That's understandable in some sort of degree. Perhaps even like Elder Scrolls 6 may not even come anymore uh, to PlayStation. That wasn't exactly confirmation, but it, it is expected. Starfield already was confirmed that it's exclu exclusive to Xbox, unfortunately. But whatever, it's their decision to make. So it kind of raises the question why everyone started arguing and saying like Xbox, in the same case, right? Xbox would not have made that kind of a purchase of $70 billion just to make sure um, that Call of Duty, as an example, uh, would also come to Sony's platform, right? Like they would want to keep it to themselves, you know? They want to keep it uh, to investing for themselves and they want to make sure that they have that because they spend way too much money on this. This is also not exactly a good thing to, to think about, right? Why would they do that? You know, because like, if you make a purchase such as, as that big, you want to see an investment back. So why would you restrict yourself from making more money? Because like, uh, PlayStation doesn't have something like a Game Pass. So they are obviously going to have to make a purchase, a full amount of purchase for one game. Like 60 to 70 to 80 dollars even for a Call of Duty, brand new Call of Duty game. And a lot of people will do that. Why as well? Well, take a look how many consoles have been sold uh, comparing this to Xbox in terms of X uh, Xbox Series X and S and also comparing that to the PlayStation 5. There's like three to one with comparison of the amount. So uh, Microsoft are not gonna just completely skip on seeing a profit that's like ginormous amount comparing this with their own Xbox platforms. Again, I do know they got like PC as well to cover that. But again, you know, PC market isn't exactly as profitable as it is on consoles. Since on PC, you know, there's a lot of jailbreaking. There's a lot of things that pirating going on. You know, a lot of people just don't subscribe to the Game Pass. There's a lot of things, iffy things going on there too. Um, but, you know, if uh, Microsoft keeps the new and, uh, you know, continuing uh, versions of Call of Duties also on, on PlayStation, it means that they're going to have more, more, well, revenue. So they're going to make their money back for the investment that they have made of $70 billion. Even though that'll take a while, because we are talking about billions and billions in this case, it's it just makes more sense in this case. Again, I understand you can make a kind of a, a reverse argument as well. I definitely see that. But at this point, it's already been clarified by Phil Spencer, none other, that indeed they're not going to alienate Sony platform. Oh, by the way, perhaps I should touch on as well Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone. No, no, that's not going to change since it makes it will remain as a multi-platform. You know, I don't think it will actually be a very good thing to do. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, Elder Scrolls Online, right? That's actually still staying on play on PlayStation. Uh, even though it's been acquired by 
uh, Microsoft, you know, with the Bethesda and Cinemax and stuff like that. Okay, now I want to get into the second part of this argument, not really argument, but a little bit of a conversation discussion. So we are aware of Bobby Kotick, like he's an Activision's longtime CEO. Since Phil Spencer is actually going to be taking the reins over as a CEO, it is actually expected that Bobby Kotick will be, well, leaving by the time that you know Microsoft finalizes with this in the June of 2023. So he's basically got a little bit longer than a year to go uh, to be a CEO of Activision. And that's actually fantastic news because like him receiving those shares and revenue is just ridiculous. Like the guy needs to get fucking fired. But instead, he's getting a privilege of just simply leaving. Oh, man. But whatever. It's a different whole thing, a different argument about. And I don't think it's actually a good thing in some ways for him to just simply leave. But I feel like it's... No, I'm, why I'm saying this because I don't want him to take the uh, percentage of shares and stuff like that. And that's all I want to say about that. Of course, there's a lot more to it. I'm not going to get into that. I'm sure many of you may also say, well, what about just a curious question? Segaro Shadows Die Twice? Well, actually, that's not exactly has anything to do with this at all. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice isn't even owned by Activision. Uh, they just published it. But it's actually one, the, one of the very few IPs that FromSoft actually has for themselves. Such as like Bloodborne and Demon Souls is actually owned by Sony. And Dark Souls franchise is by Bandai Namco. Oh, I actually just remember one other thing. It's regarding Battle.net. Just like, you know, with its official website, just, you know, with these Call of Duty titles and stuff like that, that Activision Blizzard has. I kind of hope that this website just completely goes down. Just, you know, abandon it completely. It'll be fine. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing. But and maybe just join Steam. Or I guess the only thing I want to mention is a little bit of my thoughts at the end of the day. It's regarding, you know, Xbox, Microsoft and perhaps even a question for myself included, right? Like, would I pay, you know, be considering of picking up an Xbox, you know, console? Comparing this now and before, before I would just like, no, I don't care. Like, even after like Bethesda being acquired uh, with their games, I was never really big a fan of their games anyway, uh, even though I played them. And I definitely can argue to say that, yeah, they've got very good games too. But, you know, after the acquirement of uh, Xbox and all of their titles that they have released and published, uh, you know, it's just mediocre at best. It wasn't even, like, considered to be one of those, like, heavy hitters compared to, like, what PlayStation has. So, you know, now it's a little bit different story because I feel like, you know, buying Call of Duty yearly, and we don't know, of course, if it's going to continue being a re uh, an annual release, you know, kind of makes you question, like, why don't I just pick up a Game Pass uh, get those uh, yearly Call of Duties on day one for a price of what, so 5, 10, 15 bucks and just like that I play it and give, like, have my experience with it and that's it, yeah, have enough of it. Again, the only reason I am still am not going to pick up the Xbox Series X or S or whatever the Game Pass you know, platform for myself is because, well, I'm a little bit of a trophy hunter, I'm kind of fucking addict to that at that point. And so, you know, I feel like I, what I'm going to do now is simply wait for Starfield. And if Starfield hits the home run, I will pick up an Xbox platform or Xbox console or whatnot, right? But if it's not, I'm gonna wait for the next big thing from you know Microsoft published game or whatnot and see how they perform. Because so far, none of the PlayStation None of the Microsoft published games or even those that he, they have acquired have hit a home run for me. Halo Infinite, you could argue, is one of those best games. But like, again, I've I played Halo. I'm not really into it. So, you know, I'm looking for something of a big hitter as something different, perhaps. Right. Again, I'm not trying to find an excuse for me not to purchase an Xbox console, because at this point with the Game Pass, it is extremely enticing for me to pick up anything that Xbox related. Right. Perhaps I could just simply play Game Pass uh, stuff on my PC and that's it. It would be good. Uh, but also because of the comfort of a console, I think it still would be best idea, personally to me anyway, to actually just simply pick up a console. Hell, a Series S perhaps would be the best option. But for that, I think it would be a good thing to do is simply wait a little bit longer. And still, you know, Call of Duty, I do tend to pick up those Call of Duties 
Not yearly though, because like Vanguard, I didn't even, I still didn't actually pick up the Vanguard game. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard should be more specific. And I'm gonna wait for a deep, deep sell for that, and then I'll consider picking it up or not. Uh, so, you know, I'm just waiting to see a big hitter that hopefully Microsoft will have in store for us. Like I said, Starfield is, I was gonna be up next. And then we are gonna have to wait a little bit longer because remember what I said, Xbox is gonna be finally taking the reins over of Activision Blizzard. Seeing how Call of Duty could end up being, perhaps could, could, could be the same thing as usual. Perhaps maybe, hopefully they will delay it by a year. And it actually will be quite necessary because Call of Duty has just been going down a hill and literally actually proves it in fact, right? I mean, Vanguard is doing in terms of the sales, they're actually doing worse than, what was it, Modern Warfare 2019 and including Cold War. And so, you know, kind of actually, it's a good thing because actually it's a little bit of a wake up call for Activision. But now since they've been acquired, I don't, I don't think they're gonna have to care about that any, any, any longer since, well, Microsoft is, are the ones that are publishing it. Well, will be publishing, I should say, right? Well, still, this could be interesting to find out more. I cannot wait to see how this road will be ahead of us. And, um, you know, just wanted to discuss this, wanted to clarify a little bit as well from my previous video of this acquisition that's happened. Uh, it's going to be interesting to find out what will entail in the end of 2023, because that's when we should see a little bit to a big difference with this. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. See you guys all and have a wonderful day.